It's Zarek from Real Chiropractic Dynamics. And uh, I hope you can hear me. Today, uh, I'm here in front of this big ass gong uh, with what I really on. I'm in a really unusual uh, practice uh, with my buddy here, Oliver. And uh, today, he's going to share some interesting thoughts. And the reason I wanted to get you on here is uh, is because Oliver he graduated from ACC, and when he got out, he had quite a mechanical kind of mindset and. Like I've spoke to you multiple times. I, I've known you since whenever I was still a CA. I wasn't even a student yet. Right. And now I'm in, in the student clinic uh, adjusting people. And the reason I wanted to get Oliver on is because he's very proficient in a couple of different techniques that are stereotypically very, like, very in your head. And you've got such a deep knowledge of that sort of stuff. But one thing that Oliver really has down as well is he's just got this presence about him. And uh, he really brings that uh, sense into his adjustments, and I think you're, 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 the people that you're adjusting can really pick it up as well. Uh, so really happy to have you on here, and we'd be really excited to to hear your thoughts on bringing that component to your adjusting. Thank you, Oliver. Thanks very much, Sarek. Uh, pleasure to be here. <laughs> uh, yes, I'm Oliver. Um, my clinic's called Holon Chiropractic. Just hold it up. Yeah. Okay, cool. And uh, yes, in my journey with chiropractic, um, like Sarah said, I went to ACC. Um, I was never actually really mechanistic mind minded, actually, but our school was quite like that. But at school, I just wanted to get quite proficient at adjusting, and I always knew there was more. And at that particular college at the time, it seemed like it was a little bit like um, hidden away with the truth of chiropractic. But I had a curiosity, and I thought there was more. Um, but you know, like most people coming out of college, I just wanted to learn how to uh, adjust people better, treat people better. And so that did take me on a path of just trying to find out what's wrong and all that kind of stuff. So that, um, I started learning a bit of SOT, um, I learned AK, which I really liked that idea because for my analytical mind, I liked the idea of being able to know what was wrong. Um, and that path was really helpful, but it did, eventually take me into another path because I realized that um, just trying to know the problem and what was wrong actually didn't totally resonate with my philosophy eventually because even though I want to know that it's an L4 or whatever but um, it, I, I don't like looking at things as problems more as potential and then I began to realize there's more going on in the dynamic of when we're adjusting someone than simply finding a particular segment for example. Um, which AK actually, as a philosophy, does agree with as well because it's a very holistic kind of approach. But um, that took me on a journey, but maybe I should say more in a minute. Well, the, an interesting thought that you shared with me before was uh, instead of looking for something that's wrong, you're looking for that part where you can release the potential. You want to elaborate a little bit on that thought, maybe? Sure. Um, yeah, sure. So from my perspective... Um, I don't like looking at things as a problem because, well, wellness doesn't come from wrongness. So when we judge, we aren't really accepting. So we're not really receiving the information. So it's, it's just an interesting thing like judging versus witnessing. So witnessing is more having a curiosity and connecting, but not being attached to absolute knowing the truth kind of thing. But just know your job in the moment is to connect, do your best, listen, become aware, and do the adjustments so yeah with that again with the concept of subluxation um you know i've seen people argue online whether subluxation is an intelligent response and clever or whether it's um really bad and it's a terrible thing and whatever and for me um i always say well i think it's perfect perfect you know it might be perfectly fucked up it might be ruining your life but it's a perfect expression of everything you have or have not digested within you know your parameters of your life so I think we come from a place of not judging it as kind of wrong per se it's important to take action and find a way to improve something if you want to improve something but I think if we come from that place then there's more acceptance and and that is a key thing I try to teach my people is that when we're not accepting where we are we're more stuck to being there we're, we're less open to 
learning the gift of where we are to, to give us fuel to get somewhere else. So, um, yeah, for sure, I don't like locking people into judgments is one thing. So let me get this straight. You, you mean to say that there's forums where chiropractors will argue online? I've heard about this. I've never seen that. <laughs> I, I've, I've only just heard about it now. No, they're lovely. I mean, they're all <laughs> lovely teddy bears and kittens, but sometimes they get a bit yeah. spiky as well. So uh, you and I have spoke before about how, um, like you've said to me, hey, I, I mix. I, I am a, a mixer. Right. Maybe this is this is why you're on, because then if someone accuses me of being prejudiced, I can say, no, some of some of my friends are mixers. I've had right. I've had mixers on the channel. Totally. Um, but what you what yeah. you, is unique about you is you're bringing other stuff into the adjustment and you've got this really powerful analysis and you've got this really good presence. But you're also bringing that intangible part into the adjustment like this kind of thing for instance i just yeah. got adjusted by oliver and tried the the sound uh, stuff which we'll not delve too much into but having that intangible stuff that isn't really the the page the people that you're adjusting they can't really put your finger on it and it might be the way you communicate or it might be the confidence that you have just in your hands when you yeah. when you greet someone and you get them lying down yeah. uh do you have any thoughts on that on because th that part's not in your head. It's not an academic process, but your people are going to pick it up. So it's important to have that understanding of it. Makes sense? Yeah. So, I mean, um, I think it's, it's, it's like that. So I, th I think if I try and back pedal a little bit. So when I was getting into like applied kinesiology, which I really liked, and the woman who taught us that was actually very into nutrition. So everything was like, take this supplement or something, um, which didn't 100% resonate for me. But what it did teach me was as we adjust people, you'd see physiology changing and their digestive system changing and whatever. And occasionally we might give them a supplement or whatever. But as I learned the dynamics of adjusting better, um, I realized that the most powerful thing I can do in the, in the moment is connect with the person and kind of help them reconnect to themselves, which is what I think we do for an adjustment. But my journey with the applied kinesiology was that triangle of health, so the physical, chemical, and emotional. And I knew the emotional side was um, somewhere that um, I think a lot of my conversations, for example, came from. So I wanted to learn how to tap into that emotion side, actually. And that was the most powerful thing I did. So I went on a, a seminar, which was kind of a little bit like NET, but it was called NMT, Neuromodulation Technique. And it really taught me how to precisely use um, intention, using muscle testing and asking questions. And what was interesting was asking a specific question, it was like opening a kind of a door for healing. And it was really, 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 I had some really amazing um, experiences with that. It was really profound. I still found it a really helpful tool. But um, at the same time, doing that for a while became very heady into my head because I was always thinking is this or that or is this, this emotion is it it was Especially good with the functional neurology stuff it gets real well exactly real so what I see with the functional neurology stuff which is interesting is um, the difference there is like um, it's all about trying to work out the pathway in in my opinion through um, really for an afferent sense to so stimulating joint receptors and whatever but at an energy sense our consciousness is actually um, having a conversation, not afferently, it's something beyond that, you know, it's that source level in a sense. So even though we're having a conversation with language here now, um, our subconscious or other than conscious mind is also having a conversation. So this method I learned was really about tapping into that. And I learned that um, each thought is a specific um, frequency or structure, information, and um, it, it, it carries a message. And if that message is relevant for someone's consciousness to ponder, shall we say, then it would help up level their, you know, their state, shall we say. Um, but that was like with that, I had to, again, think specific things. And I, I found that heady eventually, as I just said a moment ago. And then I, I met other healers who were just operating at a different level, chiropractors and, and others. And um, they weren't so thinking all the time. They were just resonating and it was their state of being. So I would say um, intention is a specific thought structure. Um, our state of being is to do with our kind of collected um, subconscious intentions, which are really our state of being in a sense. And that comes back into what we called, uh, talked about being present as well. Mm. So when we're just radiating truth really, 
So for me, healing anyway, everything, chiropractic, anything, it, all we're doing is moving from illusion to truth. That, that's really what it is. It's going from unseen to seen. It's going from cloudy to clear. Um, that is the path of understanding. And the healing path is the path of learning, really. Um, and, and that's what we're trying to do as a facilitator. We're trying to open a door, shine a light on something so that someone can move in that direction, um, which I think we do beautifully by the art of the adjustment. And after learning those methods, I was like, now I understand the dynamics of what's involved when we do an adjustment. There's this magic. Mm. Wouldn't it be cool if I could just get really good at, that's like an intention window, and wouldn't it be cool if I could get really good at just tuning in in that moment? Right. And then that made me want to learn more about um, getting good at opening windows in a nice way. So then I wanted to learn other uh, adjustment techniques like MLS and Syntropy and stuff like this. That's, that's a wonderful um, w way, way to make a syn synopsis of it because you can hide behind the, oh, the intention is everything. It's all about the intention. Well, yes, the intention's a good part of the adjustment, but I'm sure there's plenty of people that have done stuff bad, but they had good intentions. Right. We could get someone in here with no, we could go out there and find out a homeless man who's never been to a chiropractor and never studied chiropractic, and we could get him in and get him to adjust the, and even if he's got amazing intention, it's maybe not gonna go so well. Right. So you can hide behind that and be like, the attention's everything, and right. those people need to learn more of like the mechanics of what's going on, learn a technique. But then you've, the people are kind of at the other side of the, the spectrum where they're right. like, I have to find something wrong. It has to make sense from the, it all has to make sense right. mechanically and up here. And then whenever they adjust, and I've had people like analyze me before and they kind of know where they want to adjust. Mm -hmm. And even just from a, on a, on a, maybe on a subconscious level, I know I'm like, oh, they're on the right spot. Yes, like, pl <laughs> pl you know, when you're like, please yeah, yeah, yeah. adjust me there, Absolutely. yes. Yeah. And you feel the analysis and stuff. And then when it comes to the moment of the adjustment, like they'll, they'll be on your neck like that and your windows open. You're like, yes, just adjust me there. And then you feel the, the moment, oh, right. here it comes. Right. We're going to fix something that's gone wrong. And uh, yeah. a lot of people, especially as students, right. we kind of live on that paradigm. I would right. probably be more towards the, uh, oh, it's all about the intention. You know, I maybe right. need to come back here, and that's why I'd like to explore Gonstead at some point and be able to go more into that mechanical side. But if you have any uh, pragmatic advice that you could give to people regarding that thought. Well, I mean, I just think, um, so yeah, I think the adjustment's like an intention window, letting information through light, reconnecting the nervous system, whatever you want to call it. Now, if, you, if you're carrying a really wholesome message, like your state of being or the energy or whatever, you could smash the doors, you know, break the doors down. And if you've got so much goodness coming through, like, you know, they said, you know, Didi hit someone on the ass with a shovel and, you know, it was going <laughs> to, if you've got a good enough intention, they'll, they'll, they'll do well, you know. You can but, push your grandmother down the stairs, <laughs> but if you had good intentions, you'll be okay. <laughs> right, right, right. Exactly, exactly. But, um, yeah, but it's the, of the, then there's the other side of the, the other extreme. So I just think, do both, get really good at opening the doors nicely so you're not breaking things, so you might be invited back and um, try and be present when you're working with someone. And I think that's just not being in your head, it's accepting. So again, don't get too seduced into, oh, this is so fucked up, they're so wrong. Do that and go, oh, this is gnarly. But in that moment that you come to doing the adjustment, acceptance, love, peace, and you're just there with them and not, 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 not locking them into a, a a crappiness, you know, right. yeah. <laughs> that's all I'd say. And the other concept of that I was going to say is, because um, I've seen also uh, our peers, chiropractors, show a video of someone and, oh, look how crap this chiropractor is and everything's unspecific, but this person's got a booming practice and they're doing amazing and they're like, how can this person be doing, she's rubbish, how can she yeah. do this? And you're like, okay, maybe she's not the, the most clean window opera, shall we say, the adjustment, but this person probably had very clean energy and a very good specific intention. So is it is specificness in chiropractic just a Newtonian thing in a force? Or is being specific also like at a quantum or mind level in your energy? I think it's both. And I think actually being specific in your intention or clean in that sense is probably the most important thing I, I think we can do as chiropractors, actually. Over to you. <laughs> so it's... um. Doing, doing the studying and doing the work, whether it's functional neurology, 
gone stead, learning the biomechanics, wh whatever it is. There's a certain amount that you need to know to be safe, yeah. right? And just not hurt people and understand how the body works. But then there comes a point where you have to be at the table and just be like, look, we don't really know. I'm going to be present. I'm going to follow this protocol or whatever way it is. Just listen to what that person's body is telling me and be safe. But then you have to be very focused and very present in the adjustment. So I'm sure someone like a Gonstead guy that is like, I'm not going to touch anyone's neck until I've scoped them. I've looked at the x-rays. Yeah. I've drawn the line. Yeah. I've done my motion palpation. This is all very in your head stuff. Yeah. But then in the moment comes whenever they're on the chair, yeah. It's like a like a Jedi, right, you yeah, know, yeah, right. and that's that's where I that's where I think what you're doing is very special because you you do have all all of this stuff up here. But then when I, and I feel it whenever you adjust me, and I see it when you're adjusting other people that you do have that very clean. Uh, what did you say the 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 hollow bone, the clean right. hollow bone? Yeah. So when I read that quote actually of Didi about being a hollow bone at that moment, because like at the time I was doing lots of. So this person got anger. Oh no, it's resentment. I was doing all this, and it's great, and it was amazing, like muscle testing emotions and stuff. And um, but it became very heady, and I realised that um, reading that, being in that adjustment state of just becoming hollow, and I thought that's that is really the state, um, the highest expression of what we do, and it's beautiful. And we're not we're, we're trusting. It's got to be trust and connection and trust. Trust connection. The person trusting you. That's the, trust is the skeleton key that opens the body. So you've got to honor that. And now you could be, think you're brilliant at your analysis and ex everything like that. But if you're not com connecting to the person on the table or they feel um, not honored somehow, they're closing up. And even if you do a really good Newtonian adjustment and boom, if they don't feel safe, they, even if it helps them on a mechanical level, it's not really going to um, go really much deeper than that. Mm -hmm. So just you know, try and do all, I suppose, all aspects of it. Don't know if that awesome answered your question on that one. Yeah, well, no, <laughs> it's a good, uh, it's a good idea. But uh, for for people all over that that maybe are watching this and they prefer more of like the academic side of things, or they do feel a little bit stuck in their head. Like you, you brought up the thing there about muscle testing. I watched a video on YouTube, and it's two chiropractic students discussing the scientific efficacy of muscle testing, right. and they basically just ripped it to shreds. They're like, look, it's nothing. So, and I'm like, well. <laughs> We don't really know yet. The fact is there, is there are people getting results by doing this. So it's not up to me to be like, this is, but I, I don't, I don't do it. I, I, play, I play with it sometimes. But I'm like, it's not up to me to say that it's complete bullshit because there are people that are getting mm -hmm. very good results with this. Yeah. But how would you, what advice would you give to someone that's living very up in their head and they're like, oh, how does this work? Oh, how do I find the problem? How do I go yeah. deeper into this analysis to just be able to get out of their head and into that moment right. of presence? Because that's when the real adjustment happens. Absolutely. What would you say to them? Well, I mean, I think first of all, come from an open mind, with, especially with muscle testing. Um, because if you come from a mind of trying to prove that it's bullshit. <laughs> yeah. Except that we don't really know yeah well i mean you know i do uh, i trust that it gives me information no 100 percent. but um it's not diagnosis per se and but it might help me tune into because all i'm trying to do if i'm muscle test i just want to access i just want to find a, a doorway into the, you know the system um but you know i've had some interesting experiences uh with with it with asking questions i've been quite specific and um you know had um yeah some interesting outcomes probably the most bizarre one was this woman who I'd muscle tested lots of times and um, it was funny this one month that I had about five women come with cystitis and anyway I muscle tested them tuned into what it was and they all got better within like a few hours or a day or something like that and this one woman kept coming back well she every three months she'd have the cystitis and then she said to me oh do you think I have kidney stones so I was like I don't know and I just muscle tested which I know sounds totally bizarre um, I seem to say yes, she did, and then I just imagine maybe her consciousness would find a way of There's breaking it be down. People listening to hear you saying you muscle test, they're gonna have steam coming out of their ears as they watch the video while they're having their breakfast. There's steam coming out their ears. Yeah, I probably <laughs> I should learn when not to talk. Probably, uh, I don't even know if I should share the story, but it was fascinating. So anyway, long story short, she came back two weeks later. She had gone home the next uh, that night or in the morning. She had peed out kidney stones. I probably shouldn't even share this story. Um, 
but that was very interesting and it was the only time that she and then well actually then we did it one more time and the same result so the point being that that was a very specific thing and we had that result twice but Ex I, explain I, that mechanistic people right. explain that Is we that, don't know well exactly <laughs> so it's like um it was it, it was very bizarre but I, i'm not saying i could do that with if you give me 100 people is it reproducible, people, <laughs> is it reproducible? <laughs> probably not but it was like uh, that's kind of bizarre so um, I don't know, you know, in the muscle test, um, it's a useful tool, but again, you don't have to use it. There's so many ways we mm. find information. It's just information. So. Well, you know, that that's anecdotal evidence. It's that's just anecdotal evidence. So we can't do a randomized double-binded control study on that. So that means it's bullshit. So what you did for that, let's get that woman in here and say, isn't what he did bullshit? Right, and see right, if she right. agrees. Well, th the thing is, everyone would just say, well, it's coincidence, but it's like, mm. okay, well, it actually it happened twice so she the first time and then she came back and said do you think i have any more we did the same process she came back again and said yeah mm. i peed out the rest of them and um those were the only two days that she ever peed them out apparently um so she could have been winding me up it could have been a joke on me that's mm. possible but i don't think it was like, she was biased she was biased <laughs> yeah so that's uh, i often use that example just because i think it's so specific because we'd use muscle testing and like maybe it improves someone's uh, say if they had a virus or something, which again, you couldn't prove. Um, but with that, it was something very tangible. So it was an interesting story, mm. but you know. Uh, Ar Arno uh, shares a story. He's like, look, d you don't want to go down the symptom route because uh, if Oliver comes to me with a shoulder problem and I fix his shoulder problem, well now Oliver goes, tell, goes and tells all, all of his friends who have shoulder problems, hey, go to Zarek, he's going to fix it. Right. And, and now you're the shoulder doctor, right? right? Uh, and it's like whatever you're fixing whatever right. whatever you're healing right. is what you'll attract right. so I, I had a patient uh in student clinic and uh after maybe eight weeks of care uh she said you know regular patient and she's like um do you think this could help with polycystic ovary syndrome and i'm like i don't know why why do you ask and she's like well i keep a diary and i also keep a diary of my of my cycle mm -hmm. and uh uh, b before coming to you I hadn't had a period in six months my first adjustment when I look at the diary nothing happened my second adjustment with you the week after I had my first period in six months and since then my period came right. like clockwork do you think chiropractic had something to do with that and I'm like honestly I don't know but you know if your body's working better and your cycles improve then that's great work right Next thing I know, I have like four, I think I have four or five patients now right. that all have polycystic ovary oh, wow. syndrome. <laughs> so it's whatever you're helping people yeah, with, yeah, uh, yeah. that's what you're going to attract right, into your life. Right. Um, Oliver, thank you for coming and sharing your thoughts on the, that intangible component right. of the adjustment that is not mechanical, that we can't uh, really explain. And if you have anything else that you, that, that you want to wrap up with, uh, and yeah, thank you again for, for coming on and, and sharing. Well, thanks for uh, inviting me. Um, yeah, no, I mean, that's it. I think just being mindful that, like, whatever's going on in our mind, there is some sort of um, exchange, I suppose. And, uh, yeah, the more we can be present, neutral, clear, then that's the right place to be. But the only other thing was, we spoke of this before once, um, also, once you've done, done an adjustment, don't undo it by judging yourself that it wasn't good enough. So I know sometimes when we're in, certainly if we were younger or earlier in our adjusting, um, I know that myself, like with, uh, I'd adjust an ex-girlfriend years ago and then it wasn't good enough adjustment for me. And then I realized that I was actually taking away a lot of the goodness of that adjustment by judging myself. So do your best you can in the moment and um, stay positive in that regard. And all right. yeah, it's all good. Thank you guys. See you next time. See you next time. <laughs> Wow, great job, man. That was awesome.